Listen, if you clicked on this video, or hell, if your algorithm automatically put this video on autoplay for you, I believe it's for a reason. This is your sign to start now. Achieving your goals, whatever they may be, and becoming a better human being often seems impossible. I mean, y'all, I can't even count the number of times I was having lunch or a happy hour with a friend and we both expressed new goals we want to achieve or habits we want to instill in our lives, only to be followed by one or likely all of us saying, I know, I just need to do it. I just haven't yet. I know I should. So watching this, there's probably something you know you should start in order to make your dream life a reality. So what is that for you? Really think about it. Maybe it's one specific action, or maybe you're wired a little bit like me, sometimes in just a sea of overwhelm with all the things that I want to start, unfortunately to the point of paralyzation. So if you can, think of what that thing or few things would be to start. Obviously, health and wellness is a pretty common one. You know, I should eat better. I should stick to a workout schedule. I should drink more water. I should establish a skincare routine. I should add more greens into my diet. But then productivity and career pursuits are another. I should update my resume. I should keep a daily agenda and be more organized. I should ask for that raise. I should even wake up earlier just to have more time in my day. Maybe what you should start is going to therapy on a regular basis, nurturing your romantic life, or calling the loved ones that you haven't spoken to in a while. Maybe it's diving into a brand new hobby that you've been itching to explore, like creating a YouTube channel, or going to a pottery class, or joining that local kickball team. The only thing standing in your way is you. Don't self-sabotage when you desire a change in yourself, your lifestyle, your career, and so on, but are too afraid to act to achieve those things. Do me a favor and imagine your highest self and ask what do they do on a daily basis? Present you is also future you, you know, so think about what your dream self does daily and then start showing up as that person daily. Start now, not tomorrow, not Monday, not next payday, next month or next year, now. Six months from now, you are either going to have six months of excuses or six months of progress. Time is gonna pass either way. But of course, the question is how? How do we start? How do we harness this motivation and inspiration and actually start showing up? How do we stop waiting until tomorrow or next New Year's Eve to start pursuing our dreams? Don't give yourself a reason to wait whenever you can take the first step towards your goals today. Remember, you're allowed to start small. You don't have to take huge life-changing leaps. You can take minuscule but still necessary steps towards becoming your dream self. And this video, this is your sign to start right now. You owe it to yourself to chase your dreams. If you never try, then you're gonna be weighed down by your regrets for the rest of your life. That is just a fact. You're always gonna wonder how your life would have turned out if you actually took a chance on yourself. Don't let that happen. Don't let your future self be disappointed by your present self. You have so much potential hidden inside of you and you deserve to explore it. So don't sit around daydreaming about what you might do in the future or next month or even next New Year's Day. You can take action right now. You can do and be anything you want and you can start today. Hi friends, let me be completely transparent with you just right off the bat. I'm making this video because this is a very real, very honest conversation that I have with myself on a 
regular basis. Anytime I want to pursue a new goal, establish a new habit, I mean, I'm human. I get caught up in those, mm, I should probably do this. Uh, I also wrestle with the what ifs of it all. I mean, I'm human. So before I even dive into what usually helps me start, I just wanna let you guys know that I'm very much in the trenches with you guys whenever it comes to this particular subject because sometimes, and maybe this is just me, maybe you can relate, but when I watch these YouTube videos or read certain articles, sometimes the narrator seems like they have it all together. They have figured it out. The formula is perfect. They're flawless. And I don't want you to think that's the case when watching this video when it comes to my life because, um, yeah, that's not how it is. <laughs> With that said, I do actively work on myself to be a better human and ultimately become the best version of Katie Calloway that I can possibly be. But that's not without a lot, a lot of hard work and self-actualization. <laughs> Just wanted to put that disclaimer out there. I think sometimes that's a friendly reminder that no one on the internet is perfect. God knows I'm not. So the question is how to start, right? How do we do it? How do we just start doing the things that we know we want to do, that we know we should do, but haven't done? Let's treat this like a doctor. Let's diagnose the root problem, or at least an incredibly common one, whenever it comes to pursuing our dreams and establishing new habits. And usually these habits and these goals fall to the wayside because of the fear of failure. How often do we not even attempt something because we're afraid that we're gonna just fall flat on our face and fail. If that resonates with you, if you have the fear of failure and that's what's prohibiting you from starting, I have some unfortunately tough love for you. Failure is inevitable. The great thing is you have the power to make sure it's happening for the right reasons. And let me explain what I mean by that. What is the right way to fail, Katie? Okay, look, there is a difference in failing because you are trying something new and daring and then failing because you're not showing up, doing the work or being responsible to continue these daily actions. These are two very different experiences and they should be very different in your own mind as well. I get it. It's terrifying to put yourself out there and not be great at something initially, but it is so, so much worse to fail by virtue of never even trying in the first place. But when we fail because we are attempting new feats, we are getting that much closer to achieving our goals. Fail forward, if you will. Now let's talk about the actual action of starting, right? If you have embraced that sense of failure and you're ready to start, you know, exercising, eating healthy, meditating more, furthering your education, whatever that thing may be for you, I highly encourage you to start small. If you're anything like me, then maybe your ambition is also your Achilles heel where you want to do and be all of the things all at once. And it can be so tempting just to change your life overnight, right? I'm gonna run a marathon. I'm gonna rescue so many pets from the pound. Green smoothies are my favorite thing to consume ever and nothing bad is uh, is tasty anymore to me. <laughs> you know the thing. But I say that that mindset is such an Achilles heel, at least for me, and I've very much fallen into this trap because it leads to stress, overwhelm, and ultimately quitting. It's too much at once. Whenever I've started a new habit and ultimately have like been successful in implementing it into my routine and I've been sharing that with friends. Sometimes they'll share the same desire, but what I've noticed a lot of people struggle with whenever it comes to building new habits or working towards their dreams is they'll say something along the lines of, oh, I just need more motivation. I just, I don't have the willpower that you do. But in general, that is, that is the wrong approach. When it comes to willpower, think of it like a muscle. On a daily basis, the more you use it, the more it gets fatigued. However, similarly to muscles, whenever you use them consistently and on a daily basis, they end up getting significantly stronger over time and can eventually handle a lot more. So in layman's terms, your motivation ebbs and flows. <laughs> so in terms of starting small, make sure whatever it is you're starting is easy enough that you can do it with little to no motivation at all. Rather than telling yourself you're gonna work out for an hour every single day, tell yourself, I'm going to stretch for five minutes a day. Don't commit to reading an entire chapter of a book, commit to five pages. If you want to meditate instead of meditating for half an hour or even 10 minutes, meditate for one minute, just one. Only you know what those thresholds are to make it easy enough to get done without having much motivation at all. Also, I did read about a trick that works for some people and maybe you'll find this interesting, but for some people, instead of saying, I want to exercise 
exercise for an hour Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Flip it on its head. Instead, say something like, I am not allowed to exercise any more than 10 minutes on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That is an approach I have never personally tried, but I have read a lot of success stories with people using that mindset. So it could be interesting for you to try and let me know if that resonates with you in the comments. Anyway, by setting this incredibly easy limit for yourself, not only do you make just getting started easier, but you make the sustainability much more likely long-term. It is so easy to overestimate the power of one really great day, one defining moment where you did everything right, you checked off all the boxes. It is so easy to overestimate that power of those circumstances. And it is also incredibly easy to underestimate the value of teeny tiny micro shifts and small changes in your daily routine. Too often we convince ourselves that massive success requires massive action. But again, that's not the case at all. You know, whether it's like losing weight, starting a business, winning some kind of championship, we put this ungodly pressure on ourselves to make this earth shattering achievement happen and improvement that everyone will talk about. But the best way to be successful at doing these things is by starting small and starting sustainably. Then once you have these small habits kind of under your bell, you're really chipping away at the ice block. That's when you can slowly intensify whatever it is that you're doing. Do not underestimate the power of tiny compound gains. Improving by 1%, 2%, it is barely even noticeable and I get that. However, it can be far more meaningful, especially in the long run. The difference a tiny improvement can make over the long term is absolutely astounding. Okay, I'm god awful at math. I'm so bad at math. Math's not my thing. More, this is more my thing. <laughs> I'm a creative, I'm a talker, I'm a speaker, but numbers, I, pff, no idea. So I'm gonna quote James Clear here, the author of Atomic Habits. But he explains that the numbers work out in this way. If you can get 1% better each day for one year, you'll end up 37 times better by the time you're done. Conversely, if you get 1% worse each day for one year, you'll decline down to nearly zero. So this applies to setbacks as well. What might start as a minor setback can also compound in the negative sense. Let's backtrack to what I was kind of hinting on a second ago and how most people view success as like some kind of event. It could be like gaining 10 pounds of muscle, starting and growing your business from scratch, running a marathon, getting your master's or doctorate degree, all of these things we think of like events, right? But the fact of the matter is, is that most most of the significant things in life are not these standalone, noteworthy events, but rather the sum of the amount of times we chose to move the needle just that 1% more forward to achieving our goals. Aggregating these marginal gains, it makes a difference, I promise you. So know that there is immense power in making these small changes and small gains over time. It really works. This is why mastering your daily habits and then slowly building on them over time is just so imperative to whatever success means to you and whatever you're trying to achieve. Now, this next piece of advice is another thing I struggle with, and uh, it's to be patient with whatever it is that you're deciding to start today. This is a difficult one. I know, trust me, I know, but learning to be patient, learning to trust the process is perhaps the most critical skill of them all. Again, I'll say it until I'm blue in the face, you can make an incredible amount of progress if you are just patient and consistent. If you're trying to add weight at the gym onto your barbells, you should probably start slower than you think so you don't injure yourself. If you're adding a daily planner into your routine, you should probably start with way less to-dos on your list than you actually want. Do not hurt yourself or burn yourself out just because you have a lot of ambition and eagerness. Those are great qualities to have, but don't be like me and let them be your Achilles heel from time to time. Start small, start sustainable, be patient. New habits should always feel easy, especially in the beginning. But if you do stay consistent and you gradually increase the difficulty, the intensity over time, it will get difficult. I promise you it always does. It is so much more beneficial to make small progress every single day than to do as much as humanly possible in one block of 24 hours. So do things you can sustain. And my final tip is just to be compassionate with yourself as you're starting this journey, you're starting this fitness regimen, you're starting going to therapy, whatever it may be that 
that you are starting today. Be compassionate with yourself. Please, please be gentle with yourself. The fact that you're starting in general is brave. I mean, it's bold and I'm excited for you, but know that any long-term change is going to take time. That's just the reality. There's going to be ups, there's going to be downs. There are going to be roadblocks and it's highly possible you will fail, but again, fail forward because you are capable. And if you've made it this far watching this video, then I'd hope to believe you're also feeling pretty prepared. Hopefully some of the points that I've talked about today can serve as some kind of like blueprint or compass. Maybe you can come back to this video whenever you're feeling off track, just to give yourself reminders to start small, to gradually increase the intensity over time, to be patient and also compassionate with yourself, which by the way, feeling off track is an incredibly normal feeling to feel. <laughs> So instead of listening to me ramble, what are you doing? Go get started. Let me know in the comments what you are starting, how this video resonated with you and also what you would like to see on my channel next. I believe in you. Let's hold each other accountable in the comments and I will see y'all next week. Guess you could say I'm tired of this fate.